What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as Great Britain. So to pick up where we left off, we've been fighting a number of battles against the Ottoman Empire here in this part of the world. And as you can see, their forces have been scattered and sent backwards. But we have marched on to the gates of Zagreb and we will advance and take the city for our glorious empire. So let us attack. Uh, we very much have the strategic momentum in the... Balkan region in this Balkan region <laughs> um, and it's really important that we maintain the pressure because um, right now the Ottoman Empire has to deal with a sudden um, appearance of our troops in the Middle East so they probably have to pull many many troops back but we are also um, we can't be too crazy in terms of recruitment because I need obviously need to make sure that I'm going to uh, put a reasonable number of troops against the Marathas when I invade India. I have to put my field artillery out on the left flank so they can fire across into the enemy's position. My howitzers can go up on top of this hill firing their devastating payload. Let's create a mixed infantry front line. I've missed one unit of Swiss Guard. There we go. Let's just put my light foot and my Hessian Jaeger to skirmish ahead of the artillery. Yeah, we'll give them a cavalry unit to back them up. And then we'll put another cavalry unit on the right flank. We'll split our pike units up. And Mr. Abbott will march behind the line as they advance. So you men, charge towards the guns because we can close the distance rapidly. How it's going to open up against targets we might necessarily want them to focus at. They're going to charge us with Zimandari horsemen, an actual charge this time, which is odd. Skirmishers might get a volley off into the flank. Our skirmishers themselves can advance at speed. I mean, this cavalry here on the right flank is going to run, so let's push. Yeah, pike units can deal with the horsemen. Skirmishers advance to try and hit the flanks of their formation. Let's pick new howitz targets. We don't have to really focus on their artillery. My pikemen are going to see off that unit of horsemen so let's push up another unit here let's take this pike unit and run it up the hill because we're going to have a unit of horsemen potentially charge our lines again some feline semini and irregulars on the on our right flank our infantry will see them off quick climb is dropping two cavalry units have been pushed back in the center <laughs> so we can take our Troops here, fold up the flank, push our skirmishers up to the trees, keep our cavalry pushing. Ah, you guys are marines, so you decided you'd rather chase them down, eh? My cuirassier can charge in. So can my pikes, to be honest. Let's take these two units, stray them out a bit push my line infantry up like so. Who's that? You need a fellaine. They are going to make it to our line, but they are also going to be engaged. Skirmishers have many of their units on the flank within range. My pikes are in. Charge my pikes on into the semini. Charge my cuirassier into the irregulars. These units advance down the hill. Retarget, because that's damn lucky we didn't kill a whole bunch of our own guys there. Charge the Swiss pikes onto the Nizam. Mr. Abbott, get out onto the flank. My other cavalry unit here. You get ready to maneuver your way through the cavalry defences. 
So my pikemen will break the square. Who's that standing up? There's Union of Nizam to the rear. Focus fire all my artillery onto them. There's a unit of cavalry that's also walking, so I'll focus my artillery fire on them. E-men charge the irregulars, because they've all seemed to have hidden over here, but make sure to avoid try and avoid losses to that cavalry defence there. Engage the regulars. Cavalry engage you guys. Okay. To be honest, our entire line just ran through the guns. They'll bump into them and chase them down and kill them anyway. There's no need to give them a specific order to do that. Uh, no, actually, that unit of irregulars. Actually, maybe go focus on the horsemen. Ceasefire our, art our artillery. Get our cavalry into the fight to fight the Nizam. You men can finish off the irregulars. So our cuirassier will defeat the horsemen. I believe their general is hidden inside that army there. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to clip the corner of my pikemen. The Jude's taken out the rest of the Irregulars. Some close range volley fire is going to really do a number on some of these units. I mean, that poor Nizam unit. To be honest, we don't even really need to finish the army off because they are a garrison. And even pour a devastating volley into these irregulars. We'll show them what true irregulars are like. There they go. Yeah, that's, that's everything. That's all that needs to get in, I think. So we'll call it there. Make sure we don't spend any more lives than we need to, because we know the army, we know the the city will be taken and the garrison destroyed. So we can repel, repair the governor's barracks, replenish Mr. Abbott's force. And I think that's mostly all the things we can do. So all these armies on this front are all holding their ground and trying to replenish. But I just want to make sure they actually are. Pretty sure everyone's replenishing. Yep. So you can upgrade the craft workshop here at Warsaw, and this army can advance out of the city. Minus two. Yeah, you can stay in there for one turn. I may as well just let them replenish in the position. And I think the other thing to do is to maybe push on and attack the Prussians here. At Grodno, the Grodno farmland. You need to hold where you are because you're acting as a bit of a goalkeeper. We could probably take Mr. Harold Williams in advance there. Although, to be honest, there's only one Prussian army left. Prussian city left. It's tempting, actually, to wait and see where they elect to advance their troops. Because right now, they can't really push through this line. Because either they'll hit the garrison at Vilnius, or they'll hit this army in the open field, which granted it needs howitzers, so I might recruit 224 pounders in Vilnius. This force here into Cameron Napier, that's a very old force. Can't really recruit anything special. I'm going to leave them where they are. Um, our invasion armies are still waiting for the off because we have a army well the special units that we're recruiting in maryland are now in position so you're waiting for your attack orders but these armies are nearly finished we're just waiting on a couple of infantry units to recruit as well as king's royal the king's royal regiment and company of select marksmen then we can begin our indian invasion 
does mean I should really be working on the transports to get them over there. Which I'm going to make sixth rates because at least they do something. So let's recruit. First of all, let's move this fleet out of Boston because Boston's a global trading company, so it can recruit two sixth rates a turn. That'll probably be enough, nearly. I can always recruit the odd one or two more. Can I even. Yes, I probably can. Actually, that might even. I'll combine them all. I'll have a series of fleets going over there to attack the Maratha Confederacy. I'm pretty sure I'm okay with what I want to do here. You need a new army, but I don't... To be honest, I could recruit one. But I don't want to give him a... Because I lost my field marshal of Europe in the previous... In the previous episode, so let's get a unit of heavy cavalry, a unit of hussars. Can't get any heavy artillery, but that's fair enough. Let's go a bit heavier on howitzers. I'm probably going to want a unit of pikes. There we go. In general, I think that's okay. Yeah, you're recruiting. I do want to. I do, I do want to recruit a reasonable Baltic fleet because by holding this crossing, I can actually pretty effectively defend St. Petersburg from the uh, Danes. And then obviously down here in the Middle East, we are building, recruiting, replenishing, upgrading. So Hilario Huntsman is going to push on to Baghdad. This force is going to advance potentially towards Ankara, just to see what we've got going on there. Upgrade the commercial basin. Your Lordship. Um, our agent can go up to Yerevan. We do have another an entire army here. It's currently replenishing, which could be I could use to attack Istanbul, to be honest, because Istanbul is looking quite vulnerable. Yeah, we're, always, we're recruiting a new garrison here at Athens, but fundamentally first thing we're going to want to do is to attack Greece to secure our borders to our west, especially as they're, they're allied with the Ottomans, so we may as well fight them. I'm not going to upgrade any of this yet, although I am going to make sure I'm recruiting ships to occupy the ports. Don't need you as a dockyard either. I'm not going to upgrade any of this unless the enemy starts, because I'm assuming the enemy will start raiding. Cambridge, yep, you're being decommissioned, because we have no need for you now. At least until, obviously when Salamanca's finished percussion shells, they'll go straight on to percussion cap. But apart from that, we are at the end game when it comes to technology. Which is pretty nice. Okay, let's hit end turn and see how the enemy responds. troops continue to advance our, our our invasion of india will be swift it will be brutal we have an army sieging the last prussian capital um but it, it is a, a field army because it's got a large contingent of fusiliers so we are going to be sieging them and waiting for them to try and sally and protect their own kingdom so if i was the ottoman empire right now i'd be really concerned <laughs> well, I thought, they were gonna, I thought they were going to start falling back. We can push and take Istanbul. Worst comes to the worst, we'll hold it as we build up another gar build up a garrison force and then start to sally our invading army um, out to try and attack and destroy any remaining forces. And it's no good running over to my university's Ottoman Empire. They won't exist for very long. Yeah, the army fragments are combining. They can raid away. That's completely fine. As long as I don't lose Moscow, that's all I care about. And Russia's going to do what Russia's going to do. So they're pulling all their 
gentleman home, so potentially they've gone and built a school. The Marathas are going to continue trying to steal our technology. No, I mean, they've got a real imbalance of... They don't really understand what the, the deal is here. Why would I give them all that? Because I am significantly more powerful than they are. When we invade, we will clear the way. So it has been recommended to attack Ceylon first as a prelude. It's definitely a good idea, but now because I'm so close to getting my special armies, special troops, um, I'm going to invade everything in one fell swoop. So you've done some raiding, so let's just take this army and just auto that force there. Obviously they run behind the uh, <laughs> behind the fort. So I'm going to auto that. We lost a whole bunch of men, but it's, it's not a battle I'm particularly fussed about making sure we do win. You still need to be killed. Hmm. So the ideal outcome... Oh, you also lost troops. Well, I'm not bothered about manoeuvring here. I'm okay with holding that position because I just chiefly want to advance out of this pocket. So you're going to advance to that side of the Ottoman troop and then you're going to automatically destroy that small force because there's no point worrying about that. George Wade, who's an exceptionally competent commander. To be honest, we haven't got anywhere near as much replenishment done as, as I would like. Because you're going to also just wipe out that fragment of a army. Then you're going to advance on towards Sarajevo. Jude Abbott at Zagreb is going to leave Zagreb and advance towards Belgrade. Our named force under Curtis Patterson is going to leave Hungary, thankfully intact, and advance on to Klausenberg. Vienna might take a bit more... Um, a bit more acclimatising to the New World Order. So let's just make sure our infrastructure's good. Make sure we're keeping everything upgraded. Because now we've, adva we've advanced the front line. I'm going to build a church school here. Try and spawn more priests. I mean, Hungary's got way too many coaching inns. Destroy three of them. They do not need three coaches. They do not need four happiness buildings. So then here we do have a light galley to occupy Trieste. Let's get two more. Oh, my monitors must have moved because my I can't see the left hand bar. There we go. Left hand column. So Kasserine is now merged in Tunis. Um, I mean, I don't really need a church hall because they're happy enough as it is, but why the hell not? Enemy raids. So we've researched percussion shells, so Salamanca's gone straight on to percussion cap. Oxford will soon run out of things to research, but I'm going to let I'm going to let Oxford finish sheet lead cartridges, and I'm going to let Salamanca go um, do a turn researching percussion cap because Oxford has the majority of agents, <clears throat> especially you guys are probably now shouting at me that I should have done this. I mean, they can't get any better than one in an end turn phase. Let's upgrade you to a coaching in. Constructions, you... Great to that. Upgrade the Weaver's Cottage. We have the Army Board. Okay, Saratoga. Upgrade to the Weaver's Cottage. Philadelphia continue to upgrade. God, it's a lot of upgrades. Upgrade the wine estates. Should we upgrade the church school. Athens needs new roads. As does Laval. Laval, Laval. Just 
keep on upgrading. Oh, wow. Didn't realize you were angry enough to rebel, Saxony. That's what these army... These chaps are going to go up there and march out and take you out. But first... Continue with the building. Yes, we've done that. Vienna's been done. I just started to upgrade... Austrian buildings... I know it seems mundane, but it's just you gotta do it, otherwise. Otherwise you forget. Go on then, you can upgrade your theatre, finally. Elat now has a pottery workshop. Okay, so Munich Garrison. You can leave Munich. And go and attack the Saxon rebels. We we're just always going to just swarm and destroy any rebels. And because we have some good roads here in Western Europe, these garrison guards can run over and hit them as well. Because what you will notice is Sax Dresden has zero garrison. Like even East Berlin has one or two units, but Dresden has none. So if we didn't kill them, they would just... They'll take the city for free. There wouldn't be a assault because obviously it's a civil revolt. Fleet has arrived. Don't get in don't get involved in the fighting up there. Cause it doesn't matter. Yeah, so you come back. Where did you come back from? It's not the Ivory Coast. It's straight to Madagascar. Oh, that rings a bell. Straight to Madagascar. Send Mr. Vaughan out to East African Trade Theatre. You got sent back for a purpose that I've forgotten. But you're going to move to Bristol and be sent to India to transport troops. Let's get you guys into port and repaired. Let's strengthen your fleet with a brace of second rates. Troops crewed in Moscow, Tripoli, Northwest Atlantic, the English Channel, England, Syria, the Irish Sea, everywhere. Karelia, wait, oh, we're recruiting. Oh, this is a, a gap filler filler army. A gap filler army, not a gap filler filler army. Uh, right, so you guys are going to stay doing what you're doing. Vincent Bristow can leave Athens because we're going to move you over to Garrison because you are now transitioning over to Infantry. So Vincent Bristow declare war on Greece. But before we do that I need to make sure we hop over to America because we have recruited Fraser's Rangers and King's Royal Regiment of New York. So let's get Fraser's Rangers over to join Mr. Tully as well as the King's Royal Regiment of New York. Then this army will soon be in two infantry units. One well, infantry unit, a skirmisher unit, which leaves two infantry positions which you don't need. So let's take two of our weaker units. Although... Two infantry. Uh, actually, no, we can do with one of those. By the left, another infantry unit, another skirmish unit, and that leaves three spaces for artillery. Bada bing, bada boom. Yes, sir. Don't worry. Although, to be honest, I could aye, probably aye. stand to send aye, aye, an army across to secure Ceylon. So let's send Oliver. Ch uh, Oliver? Yeah, Oliver Charlton. He is going to sail, I don't think it really matters, does it? To Europe via the Azores, to Brazil, North, doesn't matter. 
sail over to India because the Candy Rebels are ripe for the capturing. So we are still building up our fleets. Obviously we're at war with the Greeks now, so we definitely do need to make sure we take them out because they've got plenty of... They have plenty of uh, ships at sea, which could interfere with our trade activities. So let's attack Patras and knock the Greeks out of the game. But let's crack on. And we're going to be seeing... Um, well, it'd be nice to... Well, because I've already fought the Greeks in another campaign fairly recently, it's kind of ironic that in the same campaign, at both roughly similar times, you've destroyed that same faction. Okay, guns on the hill. All of them. Firing whatever they want. Send a unit of four infantry units through the town. Send three units plus a skirmisher around each flank. Cavalry on each flank to join them. The general is going to support the right flank. Just let the artillery open up however they see fit. So the enemy has dug in inside the town. The left hand side is pretty uh, pretty pretty much um, abandoned. You've got to be careful. These are armed citizenry, but they are armed citizenry with pikes. The artillery's engaging. But we're going to take this key position. Get the gunners to attack some of these other units. I'm going to watch my cavalry charge that unit because there's a chance they could do a good amount of damage. Because they are pikemen, they're not rubbish. They might be armed citizenry, but they still have pikes. Oh, good, that's them dying. I got a panicked there when I heard rah, 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 and I'm like, no, oh my god, that's so many people dying. We're losing men faster than I'd like, so I might actually pull you guys out. You men storm the positions of the guns, you men advance. So you men storm the irregulars as well. Yeah, they, this armed citizenry didn't didn't do badly against my cavalry. There we go. Royal Cairo infantry guards are getting involved. You men run, don't walk. So our infantry are going to dispatch with these. Gunners in the town. Cavalry charged arm citizenry in the rear because there's a chance that these chaps might run away, light infantry. Okay, the gunners are down. Charge that un next unit of infantry. Our gunners can engage, can focus on engaging the enemy on our flank. So these are irregulars and they're skirmishing away but the round shot's coming in. The dragoons are gone. So here comes the armed citizenry who are wavering in the face of spectacular firepower. So where's my light infantry out of this mess? Okay, you get you guys get over here. 
and get ready to face off against that next unit of armed citizenry. New men form up. Actually, you know, attack that cavalry unit, that artillery unit there. New men block off that pass, that alleyway. You men block off that street. So let's drop new artillery targets. Oh, our arms, oh, unit of armed citizenry charged my cuirass. Yeah, well, let's just run away from them. Let's take these infantry units to face off against that armed citizenry. It's a bit overkill, but their troops on this flank have broken. Get everyone over here. Hit the dragoons. You men have done your duty. Advance up to this position here. Lots of shots <laughs> striking home against the uh, chapel there. Got a fight against regulars versus irregulars. Get my cuirassier over here quickly. There we go. Cavalry charge them in the rear. That should cause them to break. There we go. They're going to respond, they're going to do some reasonable damage to my cavalry, but not enough. Light infantry form up into a gun line just to absolutely obliterate their general's bodyguard unit. You guys might actually stay pivoting that way. Let's divvy up our round shot. Our cavalry is going to run back through our line again because it would appear that it would appear that the uh, enemy infantry is particularly keen on chasing down my my um, cavalry. Understandably so. It's kind of the best thing they'll do. My light infantry are pushing or are knocking back that unit of that unit of um, artillery. The general's starting to take some fire. Could charge them, but what's the point? How it's uh, field artillery engaged the armed citizenry. My howitzers can't really do anything, so cease fire. General's bodyguard is now receiving. Musket fire, and he is somehow alive. Nine men left. He's right there. Nah, he's got away. Very well their melee infantry has recovered. Push up, form line and slaughter them as they march towards our lines. Even though they're marching pretty hop 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 hop. Yes. So they formed line. Poor, poor devils. Hey, these are my Royal Car Infantry Guards. First unit's routed. More shots slamming home. Pouring fire into this flank here. Poor devils. The regular unit has fallen, and it's only these chaps whose the idea of freedom 
burns bravely in their hearts, but it is not enough to overcome musketry and artillery. And the last men alive are this artillery team with sabres drawn. Oh no, they've had enough as well. They've routed all the way back there. Huzzah! They've been chased off the field by good old British regulars. So that has dealt with the threat, the threat from Greece. There we go. Good stuff. Can this army pretty much immediately leave Patras? Minus two. Theoretically, yes, but I'm going to leave it. There's no rush to support the front because these new these new frontier towns are well within our grasp. So much so, this agent is probably just going to push on to Sofia. This agent is going to push on to Belgrade. We've still got a priest over here. I'm pretty sure most of our regular towns don't have any units in them, any um, agents in them. But yeah, just let this army sit outside the walls of Breslau and watch them deteriorate and suffer. Just a second, everyone. There we go. Had a bit of a circular throw. Um, okay. I think I'm probably going to hit end turn there. And watch how things unfold. There's our navy. Oh yeah, I remember you. Our accidental admiral. Because you're growing. Well, you have a. You did have a point. Zoom. Join Richard Stumbles. Because we're going to need some good fleets to go over there and secure the. Uh, to secure the coast. Just like what. Yeah, these fleets are growing in strength. Okay, let's hit end turn. You're all still on your way towards Ankara. Our armies are still growing. Yeah, there's lots of scattered enemy resistance near Moscow. And the main thing is if I can take the rest of the continent, and obviously those forces will not be able to uh, strengthen their forces and they will wither and fail and collapse. I think the Ottomans are aware that that's about to happen, that the front is now completely exposed. Many of their troops are actually quite depleted. Mm. There's a reasonable number of armies running around Ankara, so I need to be careful. We do need to we need to deploy and take out some of those Ottoman troops. Falling back to Kiev. Right where we want you. Slam! And then we'll take you out. I mean, you've walked right into the jaws of that army right there. I like to think the Ottoman Empire will just collapse because they don't have any, any real sources of income and they'll have far too many armies on the field. I mean, the Marathas are doomed. But they will be our largest enemy for the late game of this campaign, I think. We will attack them in such overwhelming force that they can't help but be viciously defeated in the field. And at least it will be fighting against the Marathas rather than the Mughals, which will make a difference. I haven't really fought them for a long time. So yeah, you are actually going to hold right where you are. You're not going to move. Natural causes, Kevin McDowell. No. Very well. Let's get a Highlander to replace him. Tyrell Ashton. So let's make sure we're getting everyone replenished. Let's, put, let's conduct a little bit of an industrial revolution here in Hungary. 
good stuff. Our named army is marching on to Klausenberg. First of all, Andrew Hardy, march on to Sarajevo. Demand the surrender of the garrison. Because there is no garrison. So let's recruit a light galley. Upgrade the port. We've got a decent fort. Let's build a smith. And let's keep the body house constructed. No, you can't leave yet. Damn one to blast. But Mr. Abbott, can Abbott demand the surrender of Belgrade? No, he cannot. So our lightning advance has been scuppered. This army under Vincent Bristow. Okay, let's upgrade the governor's barracks and let's build some dragoons, which we'll use in the longer term to resupport to resupply our armies. Human advance. See if you can lure in an Ottoman army to be destroyed. So this army is nearing completion. Well, I'm pretty sure you've got one too many infantry units, but that doesn't matter. This army is ready to be deployed. I mean, we are recruiting another colonial army here in Damascus. So you probably want to do want a let's get a unit of colonial dragoons and let's get a unit of cuirassier. Four cavalry is pretty good. You're continuing the advance to Baghdad, which could potentially be captured without a shot being fired. Let's check. Good old building browsers, just because you want to make sure we forget anything. Because so many of these areas are areas that we're not going to look at for an awful long time. Especially once we move over to attack India. Because once we do that, and then every every other, well, we're pretty much not going to see much movement for a very long time. Keep our economy upgraded nicely. El Paso still upgrading. So much money. Money is what it's all about. And particularly having lots of cash on hand because it means that if I need to emergency recruit a bunch of troops because after either losses or we get surprised or someone comes and attacks us from a different direction we didn't really anticipate. It's nice just having a deep war chest to just go, you know what, screw it, you're going down. So you go over here. Um, I'm tempted to land two armies near Istanbul. This army to the south. Although, to be honest, it's tempting to simply land you men also in Ankara because we've got troops on the way to fight the front. To fight the armies um, out front of the Turkish capital here, but you men, are you within range of Ankara? You're not, but you're close, so that'll really put the heebie-jeebies up them. Let's move our sloop back to Alexandria. Let's recruit... I don't need to recruit anything, really. You're building, you're charging forward, George Wade get you to march on towards Sophia. Okay, but then we really do need to probably start pushing like these Prussians away from our cities. Like Attack and destroy them. Well, to be honest, uh, let's take you first and foremost, Richie Compton. Push you up towards Babrusk. Babrusk. Uh, you need to hold your position here. You can, to be honest, you will attack this force here. 
We've got this army up here that needs to maybe... So if you men can combine... This force under Lewin Mayhew can push up to intercept those armies. You can stay here near the bridge, lest they try to cross. You men get into Moscow. Alvin Veer, who's been fighting from the right flank. You're going to knock out... Yeah, deplete, completely depleted army. Just take him out. Yeah, you men replenish and push on towards here. Okay, now we need to get on to doing some fighting because we've been doing too much skipping around. So let's take Mr. Rabbit. Other two. I, I mean, I could. Order, well, I don't want to auto resolve it now because George Wade's within range. Let's not do that actually this turn. Let's take this garrison force here, push them south to engage. The Prussians in a gar that are currently raiding our farmland. Because if we do that, that's the last Prussian army in the field, and then suddenly all these armies in the east can start to be unlocked and put on the offensive against our enemies. And that will be quite beautiful to see. So let's get. Oh, bunch of howitzers. You can tell this is a defensive army, a garrison army. They're all going to fly a quick climb. We're going to put one unit of guns out on the flank on this bit of raised ground. But chiefly, we are going to be advancing to surround and destroy because we have ample infantry to achieve such a name. Let's put the grenadiers on the flank. Let's put skirmishers out on either flank. Kick off. Take everyone plus grenadiers. Good god, there you go. This puts it into perspective. Yeah, I hear shrapnel shot. So let's get our infantry on the move. Hopefully, the gun teams will be significantly depleted from quicklime. Push up the flank. So some of our infantry units are going to have complete, just going to have massive holes blown into their units. But we are charging through the woods towards their gun line. New men advance up. Infantry, cavalry are being deployed. Light infantry run back. You can, you can hear the uh, quick climb just booming. Okay, they've abandoned... Their cavalry here has abandoned that flank, kind of. Push up and secure. Still loads of quick climb on their gun teams. Our musketry is attacking their... Got lancers, death's head, hussars, who look like they want to try and get my light infantry, but I'm not letting them. But in the woods... Gunners are providing, my infantry providing suppressive fire. Hello, the lancers are charging. No, they're not. Oh, they're now they are. Well, they've got a double, uh, a double skin square formation to try and break through. Thirteenth lancers and the fifth lancers are trying to break my positions. Retarget all of my. Beautiful howitzers. Push up our flank. Trouble is, there's not much going on inside the woods, which is where all the beautiful stuff is. There's a bit of a. Oh, here comes the fourth foot guards. Come on, 49th. Reload. More to the point. Retarget all my howitzers. Ooh, I definitely retargeted my howitzers, but... Oh, we're getting... 
weird sound issues. You men drop into square. Light foot. Hold. Fight well off. You men counter charge the irregulars. Let's get our infantry out of here. Howitzers fire round shot. Still engage the enemy artillery. Cease fire and put a volley into the Death's Head Hussars. <laughs> That's a lot of dead Hussars right from the off. Cavalry looks like it's collapsing. So this infantry unit has taken a real hammering. Push up. Take the line. Our gunners are storming. So imagine being a gunner here, being like, can you see them? I can't see them. And then you go, well, there's a lot of dead chaps over there. I oh my god. So you see the Swiss infantry routing, and then suddenly, from the trees... <laughs> Beautiful. They come over and take the gun line as our brave infantry pushing past them on our right flank. It's beautiful stuff, it really is. But now let's push up our armies to take advantage. There we go, the militia have been routed. One of you push on to fight the general's bodyguard. This infantry unit form up. Although, to be honest, let's just straighten out this entire line. Because they all want to start shooting. They've taken the gun line. Now they want to form up. Very well. Oh, let them, let them attack. Twelfth Regiment of Foot bravely holding on. Not enough. The general's fallen. Well, the general is routing. He's had enough. Nineteenth Foot Guards are reloading to pour a volley into the rear of the twelfth. Go on, you men. Ooh. Round shot struck the line of the 33rd Foot Guards. Well, there goes the 12th Regiment. Artillery ceasefire. Yes. That was a fun battle. But that's the last Prussian force in the field. Defeated. Yep, yeah, so they've fallen back. So now Harold Williams can pursue because this army is now no longer needed to secure... There's a gap here, but we've obviously got Elias Oldfield to also intercept there. Although, to be honest... Can Mr. Charlton, can your force leave Laval? You can! Your army is then probably ripe to smack straight into Mr. Siri, potentially draw in Goku Safe, Safe Safet. To smash straight forward into his army. Yes, she will bring in reinforcements. And because it's quite a depleted force, let's fight this this episode. I know we're very close to the end, but because the army's the army's incredibly depleted, so let's let us attack and uh, yeah, things should be things should end pretty swiftly because even the reinforcements coming in, they do not have any strength. And it definitely seems to be a common trend in that the, uh, the, the the Ottomans aren't able to reinforce the, their troops that they actually have in the field. So once they've been smashed once, it's kind of them out for the count. They don't have the economy to sustain the number of troops in the field that they want to against us. And a huge part of that is taking the Middle East. Because they don't have any troops. They have no cash to recruit troops and they have no ability to move them 
quickly from one theatre to the next. So my entire line... Run. So we do have enemies coming in from the right flank, but look at this for an enemy force. There they are, quick climbing us. Run my cavalry. My infantry can absolutely cut them apart. You need a Riskers of Souls, a fresh Riskers of Souls unit. Very good unit, they're a very fun unit, but they're just not very good. Okay, so the units we've got on the on the left can flank. Now watch out, they're bashy bazooks. They're just out over the horizon. Here they come. First charge of the bashy bazooks. Oh, they have fallen. There's another unit of bashy bazooks, but they might just drift within the field of fire of another unit that's ready to fire. Sadly not. They might, well they are going to make it to our line, but it's not going to make much of a difference. Let's bring in our heavy cavalry. I mean, fundamentally I am in quite a good position to just send a detachment of troops to just advance towards the enemy reinforcements. Well, the Delhi Horsemen are charging unit of marines. Bold of them. Two men run. New men run here. You hit the horsemen. To keep the cavalry running to the rear chiefly because we've got so much firepower to our front we don't have to oh no you're attacked you are being attacked by Jemat Janissaries Jemat Semat Janissaries one or t'other who are you you're the other risk you're the risks of souls the organ gun is getting my artillery to all folks on the risks of souls you men will knock out the Janissaries fairly quick capture that enemy standard men Enemy generals been killed. There we go. We've got the we've got their flag. Human advance and ready to pour musketry onto this unit of Semini. Advance. Yeah, this enemy force looked strong on a map. But uh, in reality, it was things were pretty bad. Pull my cavalry back just in case their risks of souls attempt to simply run around our line. See so men reload and pour fire into those damn semini. It's a handful of guys left reloading who clearly can't fire three rounds a minute. There we go. They're going down. going for my general, eh? Yeah, they've not done... They've done okay, okay to withstand that. So let's take you guys and do this. Smash them with the cavalry. Switch the artillery to ceasefire. So they are low armour, that's the thing to remember about the Risks of Souls, is they, they, they can be quite scary, but they are fundamentally fairly light. So 
to advance our troops around. The enemy irregulars there are going to open up. Bashi Bazooks, troops, crew for the organ gun. They've left their gun behind. I'm not overly concerned about making sure I kill as many of them as I can. The army is doomed for destruction. So the 133rd, 114th and 125th are going to open up on this unit of Feli Musketeers. So many men died. Two units fired. Good accuracy levels. Just annihilated them. As you can imagine, troops here are not doing so great either. I mean, as much as I said, I'm not bothered about how many of them I kill. Actually, I probably should be, because so many of them are so weak. Actually, maybe my general go for the artillery. The heavy artillery, my heavy cavalry go for the irregulars. Bashi bazooks. They're a good one to kill. Risks of souls are back in the action. Not for long, though. They risk their souls, okay. New men cease fire. Okay, so I think the thing to do is to speed up time, because it's only a gunner that's still alive. My general can take care of them. Go on, see if we can take out the 18 pounder. Nope. Well, we have. We, well, we've taken them out. Let's make sure we can remove them from the world. Hey, there's an enemy irregular unit that might have returned. Chase them down. Same with my general. Yeah, they routed as well. They're the last unit left. You, you are damn lucky. I oh, know the actual last unit is this unit of 12 feline musketeers. Let's bring all of our cavalry over here. So you are going to make it through the line. I like, so the problem is I didn't want them to charge through my line and kill all my men in a cavalry charge. They're not all here though. There's seven of them. There's four here. Doesn't matter though. Nevertheless, that was quite a significant victory for our forces. Yep. Back you go. Troops, so we're not going to push out of... We're not going to push past Transylvania yet. But we will want to push on towards Iasi. You're going to march out slightly more this direction. There we go. So you're blocking them in, you're preventing them from driving, preventing the Ottomans from driving east. You men might actually run up here, block this crossing here between the forest and the river. The Minsk garrison that is replenishing can go to Vibetsk. Although to be honest, I do need to keep up my whole... Take this, take the... Uh, smallest infantry unit and combine it with as many others, others as I can because there's a whole lot of infantry in this part of the world there we go you men gather and replenish at Minsk good so that's this part of the world done could sally you out to smack into that force, but I'm not so worried about that. You're just out of range of Ankara. Could probably do with smacking this army before next turn to prevent them from marching west to Ankara. But I think the first thing to do before I forget is to get these men into their armies, 
into the army. Add the guns. Good stuff. So let's let's get our invasion launched. Because the most efficient way to do it is to run them into docks, but I don't really care about um, maximizing movement movement points because they're going to land. Well, they're probably going to land not at a port anyway. So. I mean, okay, you want to walk around the long way? Very well. Frame rate. Oh, wait, yeah, okay, you're going to go. You're joining the army there. So let's get the sloop out, because the sloop is still going to guard the port. So let's take the army and bark. And then we've got you oh, climb aboard ship. ship Do you think the the uh, the Mughals might know something's up? Go on, Elias. You've been a brave soldier over many campaigns in the Americas. Now you're off to conquer another territory for the Empire. Where to, Captain? And that leaves. Have I left all my agents behind? No, only one. But that leaves this army here with the King's Royal Regiment and Company of Select Marksmen slash Fraser's Rangers with the pride of position aboard one of our main battle fleets. Well, not one of our main battle fleets. It's thirds and fourths. It's not first and seconds. And a whole bunch of sixths I now no longer need. But let's send them over to India anyway. Because they can raid ports and blockade ports and do lots of good stuff. Like they are still useful. It doesn't matter what ship it is, one ship landed in an enemy port denies it. The, denies the enemy the use of said port. So I think it's worth doing. So let's hop over to Europe. These are our main fleets coming in. Giles Brophy. Climb aboard the fleet. Sail to India. Go on then, Jasper. You can have the honour of taking our second British army to India. Okay, you're now repaired. Actually, Thomas Matthews, now you're no longer needed in the trade theatre. I might move you to Sandy Bay to garrison the Strait of Gibraltar. These fourths realistically aren't needed in the med, so let's also send them over to India. So you're likely needed in, well, will be needed in India. Let's give you a admiral, Harvey Crabtree. So let's bring, let's get you into Belfast. Belfast is recruiting some uh, third rates, but let's recruit a handful of firsts as well. Then you're ready to attack. You're still blocking off the Baltic. The beginnings of a Baltic fleet is being built, although it doesn't need to be uh, massively powerful. Because we do overmatch the enemies that are currently in the Baltic. You can't attack them yet, so you have to wait your turn. You're still holding the bridge. We're not pushing in this direction. We can't push here. Okay, we might end with Jude Abbott attacking Belgrade. because I, I will attack it manually because I don't want to damage this force even more. And I may as well attack it because they have overwhelming force. So I have every reason to attack it. 
But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for the capture of Belgrade. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>